Welcome everyone to our second video of our methodology series. I am Raf, the director here at the Institute for Marine Research, and today we're going to be talking about CPCE, which is Coral Point Count Analysis with Excel Extension. Our CPCE methodology is used to measure richness and diversity on the ocean floor. This is done by taking pictures of the bottom of the ocean floor and then seeing how many of one species there is and how many different species there are. The region that we measure diversity and richness in our long-term reef monitoring project is to see how resilient these ecosystems are going to be to changes, whether they be anthropogenic changes like climate change or natural changes. The more diverse a reef is, basically the longer it's going to continue existing through time. The reason it's important to have ecosystems survive through time is because we want to make sure that these ecosystems continue their ecosystem services, which are the services that ecosystem gives to us, humans, when it comes to reefs. This um, comes in the form of breaking storms, stopping erosion, and a million other things. Reefs are really, really important. And then we also want to make sure that they continue their ecosystem functions. Ecosystem functions are the functionality that each ecosystem has to the animals that are living in it and to the other ecosystems that surround it. Just like with the other methods, we'll be explaining other ways that we can use to take the same data and why it is that we chose the methodology that we chose. Now, we'll start with the first one, which is non-specific coral cover. And we'll start with the pros and the cons. So, pros of non-specific coral cover are obviously its simplicity. Basically, what you're doing is you're getting a certain area, and you're saying if that area has either coral or it doesn't, and then what percent of that area has coral versus what doesn't. Now, the good thing about this is that you also have very little knowledge. You just got to know what's coral and what's not. Um, you don't really need any specialized equipment. You can do it with just a slate and a pencil and a square that you can make out of PVC pipe, or you can do it through remote sensing. That means that you don't even have to get in the water it's possible to use um, using satellite images and stuff like that to be able to see areas that have coral reef or don't have coral reef. So it can be expanded, it can be reduced, and it has a wide variety of ways of getting that same data. Now, um, another good thing about this is that it's really hard to mess up. If you're just choosing between coral and not coral, there's not a lot of places for mistakes to be made. And because you're using percentages, then the little variances that you'll be able to get will mostly be masked under most of the data. Now it does have its cons. Because it's just the presence of coral versus the not presence of coral, what you'll find is that it doesn't give you any measure of how healthy the reef is. You just know there is reef. Not how diverse the reef is, what the species richness is, um, is the reef getting better, is it getting worse, is it good, is it bad? We don't know any of these questions, we just know is there reef or is there not. Um, it can also vary depending on your definition of coral. Um, I've seen uh, studies that indicate that soft coral can be identified as part of coral in non-specific coral cover. Sometimes it's not. So it really depends. It's a really good way of getting a good measure of how much coral reef there is in an area without getting into any specifics. Alright, the second methodology that we're going to talk about is going to be growth form ID. Now this is kind of a step up from just non-specific coral cover and what it, um, what it basically is is identifying all the different growth forms which are found over a specific area. Just like the last methodology, one of the advantages is that you can do a lot of different um, you can do it a lot of different ways. You can do transects, you can do square meters, you can do it through remote sensing. Another pro of this methodology is that you don't actually need any specialized equipment for it, just like the last one. Normally, if you have a slate and a pencil, that's what you're using. Now, it's also easy to memorize. Um, there's at most, depending on your classification, five or six different growth forms which you're trying to remember. So it's not like you're remembering anything specific about the corals, which makes it easy to learn and available for citizen science. So you can have a lot of people making a lot of data. The final and probably the most important pro of this methodology is that you actually get some semblance of complexity. By seeing if a coral is either branching, plating, or massive, you actually get an idea of complexity on the coral reef. Now we do go to the cons, and that is that other than the slight information you might get from some growth forms, it doesn't actually give you that much data. 
Using this, you can't really tell if a reef is healthy or not, just by knowing which corals are there and what their growth forms are. As well, it kind of ignores the little fact that there are corals which have various growth forms, sometimes at the same time. One great example of how this methodology can sometimes be a bit misleading is, for you coral nerds out there, the echinopora coral. Um, this coral, when it starts out, it encrusts over coral, so it would be an encrusting form. But as it starts growing out, it actually plates out. So you're like, okay, it's a plating coral, but as it grows even more, it actually starts branching off the top. This, if you were to put it over a transect, you see, oh, there's encrusting coral, there's plate corals, there's branching corals, there's all this diversity, when actually it could be very well the same coral. Now, um, another thing that changes, depending on who's doing this methodology, is what you consider coral. So do you now soft corals be considered coral? Do you count anemones? Are they part of your methodology? Do they even get tallied? What is rock? What do you classify as rubble? These kind of variances can exist. Now, um, this can also lead to human error. When you're stuck in between um, what to call this coral, it kind of looks branching, but it could be this, but it could be that. It, there's wiggle room there for error to happen. Finally, we have arrived at the methodology that we use here at the Institute for Marine Research, which is CBCE. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking, but RAF, CBCE is a software, it's not a methodology, which is true. But because of how the software works, it kind of implies that a certain methodology is being done. The CBCE methodology is when you go over a transect of a set distance, and then every certain amount of meters, centimeters, depends on how you want to do it, you take a picture, and this picture will then be uploaded to the CPC software in order to be analyzed. Now, let's talk about the pros and the cons. Pros are that, again, you don't really need to memorize or have too much knowledge in your head in order to do this. This is because all the pictures will be analyzed later. This is also a second pro, the fact that these pictures can be audited, which means you can have someone do them, and then if there's something wrong, you can actually go back and check the pictures, something that is really hard or almost impossible to do with the other methodologies. Another pro at it is that um, it actually gives you really, really good data on diversity and really good data on reef health, which is something that the past methodologies couldn't do at all. But of course, no methodology is perfect, and it does have its cons. The first one is that unlike the other methods, you do need a camera, so you can't just get away with it with a pencil and a slate. The second one is that there is a limited area that you can survey due to the fact that the pictures have to be taken by a diver. That means that you have a limited amount of time and you have a limited amount of area that you could theoretically take pictures of. And finally, the codex, which we're going to talk about a bit later, can actually differ from methodology to methodology, from scientist to scientist, and can make it a little bit hard to analyze together and to kind of contrast against each other if you don't have similar codex. Luckily, there seems to be a standard which holds up among most of the industry, especially when it's done by Genus, which helps us being able, uh, to be able to compare it. Once the dive is finished and the data has been collected with our transect and our pictures, we go to analyze it. And we do this by putting it into the CBCE software. Now, how this is done is we put the pictures from our GoPros or whatever camera you use into the computer and then the computer will actually put it into different picture files. So you'll go picture by picture by picture. Each picture will have 30 random points selected onto it. These random points will be landing on whatever it is that's in your picture on the ocean bottom there. And then using the codex at the bottom, you'll actually be able to choose what it is. Now we do our ID by genus. That means that we get each individual genus of each coral that's being touched. But, of course, the sea floor isn't made up entirely out of coral. There's also a bunch of other stuff, and all of that other stuff is also included inside that codex. Once you have that, and you've gone through every single picture, you'll actually have a big Excel spreadsheet exported. This Excel spreadsheet will then allow you to compare our data from this with all our other data, like SVS, which we already talked about, and from our impact assessments and all our other methodologies. Alright guys, and that's the whole methodology. So stay tuned, we're going to be doing our 3D methodology up next, and as you know, we will be going into our analysis videos later as well. But just to give you a little bit, a little taste of that, I'm going to give you this little tiny video of someone analyzing some CPC. 
So stay tuned and please subscribe and press the like button. I got it wrong last time, but I'm really now confident that it's going to be here. That's where you press the like button, I think. I got it wrong last time, but this time it's going to work. All right, bye.